Good morning. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Good to have you with us on the show. Hopefully you had a good three-day weekend. That was nice. One thing that's cool, our semester kicks off today. Spring 2022 kicks off today. We want to welcome all of our students who are heading back into class. We wish you the best of luck this semester. It's going to be a good one. Uh, Dr. Tony Rayo Sutherland is joining me right now. It's beautiful outside, Tony. It's a little chilly. They say it's going to get warm tomorrow. Then we've got a cold front coming through. Could have a wintry mix by the end of the week. So you know how that goes. Stay off the roadways, more or less. Uh, but uh, things are looking very winterish here in Houston. I like the idea. I mean, you know, I like the seasons, even though I've, been, I've lived in this area forever. I still like the seasons. So whenever it accommodates, I'm I'm happy <laughs> when we have seasons. Usually it goes from Houston. We have, you know, we have summer blazing hot. We have the false fall summer part two. Then we have the false fall part two. And then we get into winter sometime in like January and February lasts for a couple of weeks. Then we're back into nice weather, which usually happens, I think, in April. That's the nice month. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know how that goes. Uh, hey, we are back on HCC TV. If you don't get a chance to catch us live, we're live every morning when HCC is in session. 10 a.m. Facebook Live and YouTube. You can watch the rebroadcast of our show at noon, 5 p.m. And now... 10 p.m. That's right. 10 p.m. on HCC TV. You can also follow us in social media as well, Tony, and we encourage that. Absolutely. And you can go to Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. We are on just about all social media. So follow us. <laughs> That's right. Okay. We've got a packed show for you. Um, HCC guest that Tony's going to be talking to shortly. He's the vice president of Texas Swim Academy, the first place winner of HCC's business plan competition back in 2015, William McMorty. William, good to see you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. We're looking forward to hearing all about the Texas Swim Academy and uh, your competition. I understand you guys are doing very well. So Tony will be with you shortly. Stick around. We'll be with you in about 10 minutes. All right, we're going to kick things off. It is Tasty Tuesday. We always have a chef. We've got a uh, friend to the show, Ken Bridge. He's the founder of Delicious Concepts Restaurant Group and has a brand new Korean barbecue restaurant opening in the Heights. Ken, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you guys? Thanks for having me again. Good to see you again. And you're, you've are you got so many things going on. You always have some cool little concepts popping up. I've got to mention, I know it's been long gone, but you're still in the building right now. One of my favorites you did, and it was special to my wife and I, because we used to walk down the street, live down the street from the location you're at now, back when it was the L. And uh, we loved that place. And it had a cool vibe. You've had a couple of different things there now, and you've got your newest restaurant. Tell us what it's called, and let's take a look at it. The new concept is called Mapo Jung, and it's a one-of-a-kind, unique, super awesome Korean barbecue-inspired uh, restaurant here in the Heights, where the formal uh, former ritual space was, the beloved yeah. ritual, our steakhouse. So, you know, we like to change it up, as everybody knows. So super, super pumped to bring this to the neighborhood and bring this to the community and to the fine city of Houston. And tell us a bit about the concept, because I know this is special for you, because I believe you have Korean, a Korean background, correct? Correct. Yeah, I'm a Korean-American. My mother's Korean. Uh, my dad's a white boy. Whatever the mixture is, the beautiful mixture. And um, I grew up uh, you know, cooking and helping my grandmother and my mother since a very young age, uh, making all that uh, delicious, uh, interesting stuff, the kimchi and the gochujangs yeah. and uh, everything in between, so... Well, I know um, you, you, that's, that location is a special location. I, I mentioned the L. You had ritual there as well. You're always redoing the inside. Let's take a look at what you got planned now for Mapo John. Fantastic. Yeah, the inside has not changed too dramatically, but uh, one of the big additions, and let me flip the screen around here. Uh, one of the biggest additions is, um, you know, we put in this super huge uh, HVAC system, okay. which we added to our existing, but the uh, it's called an updraft system. And uh, let me show you a table shot here. But uh, all of the cooking with all the proteins, the delicious uh, marinated short ribs, which is, you know, the star of the show and yeah. all of the briskets and the chickens and the porks, uh, they get cooked at the table. 
and your server cooks table side and it's an awesome experience. We've got this updraft system that pulls all of the, um, uh, the smoke and the fumes up so you don't leave the restaurant as you typically would smelling like a Korean barbecue. Um, and it's just fantastic. We're super, super excited about it. Um, new furniture, new furnishings, um, butcher room, definitely the same. Um, yeah. Change that up a little bit to uh, uh, really work with the concept. The bar is going to be super dynamic. Uh, we're, uh, we're house curating and infusing um, all of our sojus and having some specialty sojus, uh, all Asian draft beers and uh, house specialized cocktails like a uh, Korean pear martini and uh, a, uh, a Mapo uh, house old fashioned and so on and so forth. So we're super, super excited about that. I know folks are familiar with your restaurants. I mentioned the L, you had Trace Amigos, um, a number of others, but you still have a couple of them that are ongoing right now. Tell us about, I know Pink's, uh, famous pizza place, some of the best pizza around. And tell us about the other location that you've got in, I think, is it Oakwood Forest? Uh, Oak Forest, we have a concept called Millie's. It's kind of this coastal seafood vibe, very neighborhoody, dab smack in the middle of uh, Oak Forest, right near Garden Oaks as well. Uh, Pink's Pizza, of course, the best pizza around, by the way. Absolutely. And uh, Lola uh, Neighborhood Diner, this uh, breakfast all day, super cool joint here in the Heights. Uh, what else? We've got this uh, spot called Ready Room that we yep. uh, had before right next to Ritual, this fantastic old school jazz bar with Peter and Cody, um, you know, manning um, the front over there. And we've got live jazz three nights a week now, and I think we'll be doing it four nights a week very soon. Very cool. So you've got, uh, you're going to do a little demo. The restaurant hasn't opened yet. We'll talk about opening in just a second, but show us what you got, because this is a demo of what you're going to be, what people can get out there to get something with short ribs. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me get my trusty uh, camera lady extraordinaire here, and I'm going to flip the camera around okay. and we're going to cook a marinated short rib. So it's a boneless short rib. It's a prime grade and uh, super, super delicious. Uh, those that are familiar with Korean barbecue will know exactly what I'm talking about. And those that are not will soon be very familiar with it when they come and visit us over here at Mapo John, right here in the Heights. So, And I imagine the whole, the whole uh, thing with Korean barbecue is is really uh, prepare. You know, you bring the, uh, the barbecue out. I imagine the meats are already marinated, but you put them on the grill, you cook them to your perfection, and then uh, enjoy the cooking experience with your friends, huh? That's correct. So the servers will be able to, and this is the boneless short rib, the prime, and we're going to put it right on the grill top. I'm going to go ahead and kick up the heat and get this uh, delicious boneless piece of short rib going. And uh, it'll just take a few minutes. What we really prefer is to really cook this to a mid rare or a little bit above. Uh, yeah. And that way you get all of the delicious flavors coming out and you get these really incredible sear marks and you get the caramelization from the marinade, which is pretty simple. You know, everyone has their own recipe, but it essentially consists of a little soy, uh, sesame, um, some type of sweetener, honey. Uh, we use uh, honey and uh, light brown sugar in this case, and then uh, ginger, garlic. Um, and, and that's really about it, a little bit of pepper. And it really, really comes out super, super delicious. And for the choices of meats, that's boneless short rib. What other choices would you have as well? Uh, we'll also have a super thin sliced brisket, uh, which comes out um, super, super cold. So it maintains its integrity. Right. And then you grill it on a, on a different type of grill. It's a stainless steel grill with more surface space on it so that all of the juices and the small kind of thin, fragile pieces yep. don't fall through the grill. Um, then we also have, uh, we've got pork bellies, uh, a uh, premium pork belly that you can get uh, just slightly seasoned. Um, then we also have spicy versions of that. We'll have a um, we'll have a chicken as well, which is um, this sort of uh, yang yang chicken, which we'll have a fried version, which is a Korean fried chicken, and then we'll also have a, um, a dark meat thigh uh, chicken that's marinated in the same type of marinade that you'll be able to cook uh, table side as well. What type of sides do you get with that as well, Ken? So what can um, you order? The, yeah, the sides that come with a typical Korean meal. We don't have a lot out here, but um, they're, they're called banchan and they're just really sides. And then we have our house made kimchi here. Um, everything we make go. in house from scratch. And, um, we've got a, um, a samjang, which is essentially a dipping sauce and it comes out with lettuce. Uh, we have this, a, uh, a beet, uh, a beet, uh, sort of kimchi, which is, a, a, a sammu, 
which basically um, you wrap your rice and your meats and all of the accoutrements with it. And it's super, super delicious. And it's very, very family style. Um, it's super interactive and uh, people just really love it. I'm going to go ahead and and cut this up. So kind of wow. slice it into bite-sized pieces and then it finishes just super quick. And this guy's getting really, really close. I know you guys, your mouths are watering right now. Oh yeah. Uh, but I promise you we have, once we get opened up here in a couple of weeks, we'll have plenty of this delicious uh, carby ready to go for everyone that's interested. And um, we'll have plenty more to offer as well. Ken, let me ask you, is the ventilating sy system on right now? It's not on. Um, okay. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to. Yeah, I didn't know because I was going to say it's a bunch quiet of noise. right there. And it does yeah, it is quiet and it's probably stuff. looking like it's not working, but it's definitely, it's not on right now. And I think um, they're really not that noisy, but I didn't want to take any chances yeah, on that. I got you. And you see this beautiful caramelization here. Oh yeah. This is, this is ready to go here. So we're going to start pulling these pieces off and then we're going to plate these. I'm going to let these guys go a little bit longer. That guy's getting close. He's ready to go. And at this point, they come up really, really quickly, as you can tell. And again, we like to serve it uh, mid-rare, a little bit yeah. a little bit beyond a mid-rare. But if your preference is well done, I mean, my mom, um, you know, interestingly enough, she only eats her beef. You've got to kill it. So um, Very I can't really say anything about uh, temperatures if you care yeah. for something a little bit above. But these guys are ready to go, and they're super delicious, if you can tell, if you want to get a close-up of that. That is Eddie. incredible looking. Look All right, Ken, when are you guys looking at opening up? Again, um, we're looking anywhere from maybe two weeks from now to two, two to three weeks, we're thinking. We just got okay. some final stages that we're doing. The sign packages uh, for the building will be coming in in a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, just a couple of final touches and we'll be ready to go. We're really looking forward to, uh, uh, to welcoming everybody here. Well, I am looking forward to getting out there. Going to get looking forward to getting back to the space again and uh, your newest concept. And we are congratulations on another concept. We, you know, we wish you the best of success with this one, and we look forward to seeing you, Ken. We appreciate you being on the show. Really appreciate it, guys, and thank you so much again. Look forward to seeing you guys soon. We'll Have see you week. soon. Take care, Ken. All right. Thank you, guys. And as you saw, Tony, that is some incredible stuff. Or is your mouth watering? I want some now. <laughs> I know. I know. We're ready for it to open for lunch today. We're ready for that, you know. But uh, two to three weeks, we're looking forward to getting out there. It's on the corner. If you haven't been out there, um, Fitzgerald's, if you remember, you remember Fitzgerald's, the old yes, music space. Yeah. That used to be across the street. It's Caddy Corner to BB's, and uh, there's another uh, bar across the street, but it's at the corner of uh, White Oak, or Sixth, rather, in Studemont, or Studem Wood, I think it's at that point. So make sure you check them out. Incredible place. Oh, I will. I can't, I mean, that was just wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, if you're interested, we're going to put some uh, social media or some links to them in our social media posts. All right, Tony, you got a very important guest. Go ahead, take it away. Thank you. Yes, I have William McMorty. He is the Vice President of Texas Swim Academy and the first place winner of our HCC business plan competition. Welcome to the show, William. Thank you for having me. Um, I I love what you do. I was looking at the uh, your website, the Texas Swim Academy, and it, for one, it's a family business, which I think is just wonderful. Tell us a little bit about your business and how it came about with your parents and all of that. Yeah, so um, it, it really started with my mom. She uh, is a nurse by training and discovered a passion for um, drowning prevention and decided that she wanted to be more on the proactive preventative side of it as opposed to kind of responding as a nurse. And so from there, she um, became a survival swimming instructor in 2004 and kind of taught from our backyard. And then in 2012, we opened a facility and my parents and my brother and I all kind of run it. And um, since then we've gone from survival swimming to opening up a whole kind of bunch of other programming from stroke development to uh, special needs um, kind of survival swimming and uh, adult lessons. And so we've really just kind of uh, focused in on teaching swim lessons and good swim lessons to any and everybody and kind of doing the research and really developing out a good curriculum and path getting, you know, 
uh, kind of the safety and the results and that we're really going for. It's amazing to me. I mean, I, I see where, you know, six months old kids are, are swimming and it's just amazing. I mean, I know my heart would be in my mouth watching it at first, but I know you guys are good. And I think that that's wonderful. And, and like you say, you save lives. I mean, because anything can happen, accidents happen. And if the child knows how to save himself, that's a wonderful thing. Um, now you entered the HTC business plan competition. Why did you choose to do that? Um, well, we, we really just became aware of kind of the great things that were happening, um, really in Houston and with HCC in particular, my, uh, my dad did the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses with HCC. And that was kind of our family and our business's introduction to, um, the entrepreneurship center here. And uh, we learned about the business plan competition and I just uh, graduated from A&M and come into the company full time. And so it was an opportunity for me to really kind of enter at a leadership level and help plan the business and uh, kind of give my, my dad a chance to relax a little and step back some and enjoy some life. Um, which has always been a big goal with the business is to kind of let my parents have have something that they built and then they get to kind of enjoy it and and see the fruits of it and not have to toil quite so much. Um, so the business plan competition was an opportunity for me to come into the into the company and really start to help out. And so we decided to do it. That's wonderful. Uh, you know, you, you look to retire. You don't want to have to work every day of your life forever and ever and ever. <laughs> So uh, it's really good that you're in the family business. So that that's wonderful. And you've got some tools now to improve on it. Um, tell me, what was one of the biggest uh, experiences that you learned from it? What, what did you take from the uh, competition? Um, and, and not to say that I'm rushing my parents out. I love having them there. Um, <laughs> But with, with the, the business plan competition, I think it really teaches you to kind of test out your ideas in a way that's more conducive to, you know, like resetting and making mistakes without really losing a whole lot. And so um, like the, the business plan that we wrote whenever we were in the competition was to do a competition team. And we wrote out a plan that kind of was like the ideal situation where we build a facility and we run a, a program that's pretty competitive and stable. And then we were able to take that plan and work it into a growth plan where we start small and build it up and really kind of like, you know, do it right. And we did that for a few years and kind of found that it, it wasn't a bad business and it was a fun operation, but it wasn't really true as much as we wanted it to be to our focus of drowning prevention and water safety. And so we then made an exit strategy, kind of scaled the team out, um, helped place all of our swimmers into the new teams that had shown up in the time that we had existed with coaches that we really liked their philosophy and they treat our swimmers really well. And then we focused back in on drowning prevention and really shoring up our curriculum and um, learning about child development and communication and uh, swimming mechanics even a little better so that we can teach the best lessons and kind of help prevent drowning in a real way and get skills on these kids, you know, as young as six months or who maybe have some learning um, trouble or like special needs or physical disabilities, just really kind of helping figure out how to serve everybody in a way that we're really proud of and we think is going to be good for, for the community. I think it's neat that it it let you look at things from a different point of view. Sometimes uh, you're so into what you're doing that you almost need other fresh eyes to look at it and say, hey, you know, why don't you try this or, you know, whatever. So that's that's very good. Uh, now, you know, I, I know that the uh, pandemic has affected just about every business that there is. Has it affected your business in any way? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's hard to teach swim lessons over Zoom. <laughs> and so it, it has affected us. Um, 
but we, we tried to kind of be positive and so there's some good that came out of it we we did slow down a whole lot um we really focused in on um teaching infant like survival swimming lessons so we really scaled like even our stroke like we we kind of suspended our group classes and are doing private instruction only and like our average age has gotten a lot younger from throughout the pandemic because it's been you know very consistent that you know drowning is still the number one cause of death for children under the age of four um and that rate's gone up because people are at home and it, it's a it's a really kind of a, a stressful game because we're asking parents to be perfect all the time and there's so much water in houston and so like that drowning prevention is still really important and the multiple layers of protection in addition to swim lessons are still very important um, and so like, that's been good. And we've really just kind of focused in on good, accurate drowning prevention education from a medical standpoint and uh, just, you know, trying to do our part the best way we can. Well, speaking of drowning prevention, uh, you have a new product that you're bringing to your company. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a separate separate venture but in the same vein um so i am now a lifesaver pool fences distributor for the houston area um, it's lifesaver pool fences of harris fort bend county and what it is is uh, a pool fence so a barrier that goes directly around your pool um and it is kind of one of the other layers of protection the way that i kind of came to think about them was that if teaching your child how to swim is like the number one thing you could do to equip your child to be okay wherever they are. Then putting a barrier around your pool is like the number one thing you can do to make your backyard as safe as possible. And so it, it just, it was something that was a little bit more, um, it definitely was sparked a little bit out of kind of the idle time that came from the pandemic, but um, you know, it's a fun, different kind of, different kind of business with the same heart. And so it, it just really came natural and, and has made a whole lot of sense. And I really have loved the product um, even before. It's just whenever I looked for some of our swim families, if they came and asked and, you know, you go and do the research and the Lifesaver pool fence was just phenomenal. And um, the company really kind of has the same drowning fo prevention focus that, that our swim school does. So it made sense. You know, I was just uh, thinking you, you also, since the business plan helped you so much, you've also gone back at it and help other people too, right? Yes. Um, we, we've had the opportunity, my uh, father and I both to be advisors um, a few times in the past for the business plan competition. And um, we, we uh, had the chance to be a sponsor this year and it's just been a really great, great program and we wanted to give back any way we could and just stay plugged in and get to meet more people because there's so many like fantastic entrepreneurs coming through every year. Well, we really, really appreciate all that you do. And I, and I, especially with all my grandkids, I love, uh, I love what your business does preventing drowning. So thank you, William, so much. He is the mm -hmm. vice president of Texas swim Academy and first place winner for the HCC Business Plan Competition. So thank you so much for being on the show. All right, thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tony and William. Uh, of course, if you're interested in the Business Plan Competition, we'll have a link in our social media post. They are doing them yearly here at HCC. A lot of great things going on. Okay, let's get into our announcements. Brand new semester today, spring 2022 is underway and uh, the entrepreneurial initiatives program is back tony it's open for business uh hcc's office of entrepreneurial initiatives have begun this prior project for minority women-owned businesses there's women wednesdays business model canvas workshop that's happening and also the business digital academy a lot of information there We'll put a website in our social media post where you can check it out. New World, New Dimension, fashion and film collaboration. That's happened as well. And you can watch it, Tony. Yes, on uh, HCC EduTube, it was uh, 
accredited by the National Association of Schools of Art and Design, NASED. Uh, it was made by the uh, faculty, the staff, the students of fashion merchandising, filmmaking, theater, photography, XR lab and studio, and cosmetology. So that was really a collaboration of all the different departments uh, putting together a, a wonderful video. That's right. Okay. Art Clinic. Selected student assignments. The HCC Southwest West Loop Art Gallery will exhibit works from students enrolled during the 2020-2021 academic years, January 31st through February 24th. So you can actually go into the art gallery there. They're going to have pictures on the wall and lots of other cool things in there. Uh, it's at the West Loop HCC Southwest College, the West Loop campus. Of course, it's free. No registrations required. Just go on by there. Stop on in January 31st through February 24th. Digital publishing classes are also underway. Yes, you can take Digital Publishing 1 or Digital Imaging 1, and it's over at the HCC Acres Homes campus. So, uh, and they're using the latest Apple technology. So that is a wonderful way to, as they say, design your future. <laughs> That's right. So our spring semester starts today. Students are returning to classes virtually in most cases. Some of them are in person, the more mainly the workforce classes, very small. Uh, make sure you check. You should have received an email from your professor by this time. So if you want to register for spring, you got to get it done today because you can register through the end of today. But don't worry. Second start semester is right around the corner. So you can always register for that. That gets started in a couple of weeks. It's a shorter semester, more compact, but you can still get a full semester's work in throughout the uh, end of this uh, spring semester. Go to hccs.edu slash now for all your registration needs. Uh, tomorrow on the show, we're welcoming back our presidents who are welcoming students Dr. Philip Nicotera, the president of HCC's Coleman College, will be here. We'll get an update from him. And it's also another special guest, Tony. Chief of HCC Police, Michael Benford, will also be with us. And it's always fun to talk to him. That's right. So Chief's here tomorrow, Dr. Nicotera from HCC's Coleman College. And we might have a few surprises as well. Make sure you join us live tomorrow, 10 a.m., right here for Up to the Minute. 